Michigan has a new law addressing gun violence. It is just the latest in a series of gun reform bills following the Michigan State University shooting. Today, Governor Gretchen Whitmer signed red flag gun laws, which will allow courts to take guns away from those believed to be a danger to themselves or others. Michigan becomes a 20th state to violate the Fourth Amendment and potentially the Sixth Amendment to the Constitution. Welcome to another installment of Connecticut Gun Bench. Today's video is brought to you by PAN Farms LLC. PAN Farms, the NRA certification and multifaceted gun training. You can reach us at 203-300-6343 or use our website at www.panfarmsllc.com. As always, there'll be a link in the description box below. And if you like my channel, like my content, and like what I'm doing here, you can support me with the link in the description box. Everything is appreciated. And let's talk about this. So as I said, Michigan has now become the 20th state to invoke red flag laws. Red flag laws are basically somebody feels that you're a threat to yourself or someone else. They can go to a judge without your knowledge, petition that judge to then remove the firearms, if you have any, from your possession. And then you have to go to court and prove that you're not a threat or risk to anyone else. Very unconstitutional. If you remember a case out of New York where a judge has already stated that the red flag laws used in New York against a petitioner were unconstitutional. And I did a video on that a while back, but this is dangerous. These, these red flag laws are dangerous because anyone can have a beef against anyone else for any reason. And it's already bad enough that if you get into certain kinds of legal trouble, they can remove your firearms without question. Now it's just on the word of someone else that they can do so. Now, I want to jump right in. This is a, obviously local affiliate, but Whitmer signs red flag gun laws where judges can order firearms to be removed from homes. The Michigan governor signed a third gun safety bill proposed this session on Monday, which would establish a pathway for extreme risk protection orders, sometimes known as red flag laws. Governor Gretchen Whitmer previously signed two other gun safety measures dealing with safe storage and expanding background checks in Michigan. The third law, which enabled judges to remove firearms from the house of someone deemed a threat to themselves or someone else, was approved along the thinnest of margins in the legislature. Some say the bill would save the lives of gun owners and people they know because it removes the potential for violence from those who may, they, who may have mental health problems or have threatened others. That's the problem. Others say the bill goes too far because it requires the gun owner to prove they do not pose a significant risk. Michigan is the 20th state and the first in nearly three years to pass the law. The law works by giving the judge 24 hours to decide whether a request for temporary extreme risk protection order should be filed or filled out. If granted, the judge then would have 14 days to set a hearing date during which the flag person would have to prove they are not a risk, which means they've already lost their property. Then they got to go to court with a lawyer and spend money on the word of someone else. Because when they're filling out this extreme risk protection order, it's based on the word of the person making the assessment. You don't get a say. The police just show up. We have this risk warrant. Take your stuff. Then you go to court 14 days later to prove otherwise. Very, very dangerous. Those who can petition to have a fire removed include dating partners. Now, come on. <laughs> Immediately, yeah, I, a lot of you just went, damn, yeah. You had a bad relationship with someone, you broke up with them, and boom, next thing you know, police are at your door. No. It, family members, law enforcement member, or mental health professional. It's, yeah, do you not see the problems with this? Anyone can make an, an argument against someone else and say that they're a, they're a risk, a menace, what have you. It, mm. But those who lie when petition a court would face jail or financial penalty. How do you prove that they're lying? And do they actually face it? How many times have we seen somebody make a false accusation against someone else that led to a criminal, you know, criminal problem and that person got the walk? But despite this passing the Michigan House and Senate with majorities and garnering a majority of support in the state's population, sheriffs representing some of the state's most conservative counties have said they would not enforce the law 
That includes top law enforcement officer in Livingston County who said the law is unconstitutional, and it is. The Michigan Attorney General has said she can't make sheriffs enforce the law. That's the difference between a sheriff and a police chief. Sheriff is elected by the people, which means they serve the people. Police chiefs are elected or put forward by the mayors and they represent the government. And this is a clear example of it. Now, there's also something else developing because the, this Whitmer, who really made her name for herself during the COVID and her draconian, you know, pushes that she went, you know, forcing, you know, um, rules on people concerning COVID. There's been some pushback. And I want to go ahead and show you this where law, you know, groups are saying, hey, we may start doing a recall on some of these legislators. Let's go ahead and watch this. Progress in 100 days. Guess what? Buckle up. We're going to continue. <laughs> That was Governor Gretchen Whitmer firing up the supporters of more gun control legislation in our state. They are not giving up. But when it comes to the possible recall of lawmakers who have supported for those bills, the gun lobby is not giving up either. Just after the first of the year, the head of the Great Lakes Gun Rights Group issued a warning. Lawmakers, Democratic or Republican, who voted for gun legislation could face a possible recall because he argues more laws are not needed. You know, there's just this idea, well, we need more laws and more laws will solve all of society's, society's ills, but yet the very laws that are on the books didn't do what they're supposed to do. The recall warning, however, was four months ago, and since then it's been crickets, not a word on what's unfolding until now. An inside source reports, quote, there is a hunger to recall lawmakers, and the recall effort is quietly being developed. The last time there was a recall, it was lawmaker Paul Scott in 2011. Since then, lawmakers have made it more difficult for recallers to remove anybody. The lawmakers, however, most likely to be on this new list? Well, they are the ones who narrowly won election last time. They are vulnerable. And if only a few Democrats are booted out of office, the control of the legislature by the D's would be eliminated. The gun lobby is not talking, but one source says it is trying to decide who's on that list. Late summer, we should know. Heard that and you saw that. Now, what are the chances? They say some of them are weak and there's a good chance they could get rid of some of them. But if they could really do such a such a grand overhaul on the Michigan legislature, it would definitely, definitely open their eyes. Because, you know, remember that movie where they said the best way to make a, poor, a rich person or hurt a rich person is to make them a poor person? The best way to hurt a person in politics is to let them know you're not going to be in politics anymore. So... This will be interesting to see how they go moving forward. Now, as far as red flag laws go, I think they're completely unconstitutional. And the way that they're implemented is absolutely dangerous. Anyone can make a claim against anyone. You could have words with your neighbor and the neighbor calls up the police and says, hey, so-and-so said this. You know, you got, you know, you're going to your psychiatrist, whoever it be, a mental health professional. And they say to you, oh, do you have any guns? And you're like, well, yeah, I do. And that person has their own political and social biases. Could be then go to the court and petition them. You, you, there's too much room here for abuse with these red flag laws. But let me know what you think. As always, you can leave your comments in the comment section below. And as always, any statements of violence or statements that lead to violence will be removed. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you're notified the next time a video goes live. I will see you on the next one. Peace.